Okay, so we've got our notes like news readers. I can make a note here, yeah. Hello, I'm Jess, and this is Adam. Uh, we're calling this one Ask Jess, and I think it's something that we're going to do uh, regularly. The idea is that Adam has collated a load of uh, questions from our clients. Well, These are three. Three, well, yeah, three. We're going to limit it to, to three. Not on for hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the... Uh, I often get in front of the camera, start talking, and and it's pulled me back and saying quite often, or, or often, too often, I'm talking about things that are relevant to me, but forgetting how things have been in the past. Uh, and these are questions from our clients, um, maybe with you know, no houses at all yet, or one, two, three, four, five, that kind of number. And this will be my way of looking back and thinking, how did I... Instead of talking about you know how, how I've got 100, 200, 300, you know, houses and how I'm growing this way, uh, how I got from zero, one, two, three, four, five houses. So hopefully they're a bit more relevant to um, uh, to people. Uh, I've got one big thing, which is interest rates. We're going to talk about interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, but do you want to kick off with the uh, the, the the question, the first question? Well, that is, is it a big thing, isn't it? Go on then. Go on then. So. Um, the first question is, mm. right now though, yep. yeah, right in this moment, what are your thoughts on interest rates? Mm. Okay. I, you know I can't answer that like that. That's the question. What are your okay. thoughts on interest rates right now? So I, I would never try and predict anything. Uh, I, I, I would say if you were really pushed me, um, push come to shove, 6%. Peaking at six percent and then falling off pretty quickly, and um, I'm I'm totally happy with that. I think all of this stuff. My my full answer is well, the, 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 there's the usual three things. Um, make sure you've well. Let's go back from that. This is a great opportunity. All of these problems that are out there, this uncertainty, the um, what would you call it, turmoil. It all creates opportunity. So if you're coming from a power of you've got a plan, you know where you're heading, you've got you've got strength there, then you're just going to make a good opportunity. I think this is some of the happiest hunting we're going to come up against over the next couple of years um, because of some of the uncertainty. Number one, have a plan. Know, know that you've got a good foundation. Um, and even down to right house, right area, right tenant, right rent. You know, if somebody's saying, oh, interest rates are this, that's okay because my rents went up by this. So actually, um, I'm not. I, I'm, I personally, I've checked it. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm not locked down. Some of my interest rates are going up. Some are fixed. All of my rents are going up. Not one rent hasn't gone up in that period of time. So, uh, cash flow wise, lots of people buy for cash flow. So um, that that I'm roughly about the, the, the same. Um, second thing, have everything rooted in facts. Well, yeah, there is that. I'm hearing lots of, I mean, I, 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 I know what one of those questions is uh, later on, and I've seen other things, and um, we've got a couple of Facebook channels, and, and um, you can sort of see the feed coming through there, and some of it's nuts. It's, like, it's, like, it's, it's crazy. You did, like knee-jerk reactions to some stuff. Um, it could be, and that, you know, pick a figure out of thin air, and you think, well, you're, you're basing your thoughts on, on that worry, that fear, and actually, you, you, you scratch this, digging this, it's not that figure, it's nowhere near that figure, and it can't be. That, 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 that's just somebody's told you wrong, or you've read on the internet, or you've listened to a, something on Facebook, which is worse than the classic, I met a guy down the pub, isn't it? You know, it's the whole of the internet on, on Facebook. So um, know, know, your, know your numbers and make sure they're, they're rooted in, in facts. For example, who's, who's read the mini budget? Out of all of these people that are worried about stuff, I've read the mini budget. I I've read the mini budget. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a little bit hard work, a little bit boring, but you know. Uh, and I've yeah. told you already, I've never, no, I've never heard Liz, Liz Trust speak. Still, okay. like, I don't watch the news. I've, I've read some stuff that she's, she's read, but I've, I don't watch the news like so that. Basically, I, I, the answer is you're not worried about interest rates. I'm excited about the opportunity that the turmoil is bringing one of which the things that are bringing them well, the, the, the interest rates are creating a, 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 a turmoil don't forget the interest rates are pulling this way you know bank of england's going this way inflation's going this way so yeah I think uh, every brick in the house is going up in value i've got mortgages they're going down uh, in real terms because of inflation um every two or three years there's always something mm. 
happening mm -hmm. and someone will say to me i don't think i should buy right now because of this brexit covid mm -hmm. now this latest one's interest rates mm -hmm. and budget you know yep. before that there was a big crash we've had nine there's always something there's always something um yeah do your research mm -hmm. it to you. that's my third point in my plan right. so the f first one is um have, have the plan the second one is facts opinions and the third one is if you've got a plan and you're happy with it you've tested it and it is worth it's worth having the conversation you know, i'm not saying i dismissed interest rates as a problem it's not a problem of course it's a problem it's a thing to think about looked at it fact checked my rents are gone up by this that's gone up by this it's creating an opportunity i'm happy with all the other things number three thing is execute if you've got a plan execute exactly as you said there there's always a thing there's always a reason not to invest um Here's another fact, and um, diff diff say fact, fact in inverted commas, because different you, you could find different variations of the number, but it's roughly about this. Uh, during the 2008 financial crisis, property prices went down roughly 13%. Some people might say it was more like 15%, some people say about 10%, whatever. 13% is the number that I go over with, it's the ONS, Office of National Statistics, I always like that one. Um, that's all the market, all the properties, we buy the rental stock, which is you know where the, the, the value of the house and the rental, the yields about right. So that's generally speaking the cheaper stuff. I know that in 2008, the houses that I was buying were going up in value still. You know, the rest of the market was crashing. Um, so if I'd have based my decision and not bought that, how many houses have I? I've been refinancing houses now that I bought in 2008, and it's the third time I've done it. I pulled out, well, but they've all doubled in value more. Um, yeah, it's hundreds of thousands of pounds pulled out on houses that I could have found a very good reason not to buy. So life's short, you know. Um, let's put it in, you know, facts, 13%, the worst ever, you know, the worst in living memory. Um, but the houses that I bought, that's 13%, the whole market, the houses I was buying, a little bit cheaper. Some might have been going down 5%, some might have been going up 5%. Certainly it was pretty much break even. I put my money in, I bought a cheap house, I did it up, I pulled the money back out. I had no capital left in. I was making money every month. Knowing your knowing your 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 business model, de-risk that for me. Um, well, we were talking earlier, mm -hmm. and you've got a house in a similar area to me that you bought around that time. Mm -hmm. I bought one in 2016. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I look at it now and I think brilliant. It's pretty much yeah. doubled in value. I wish I bought it in 2008. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Um, second question then. Mm. So. One client in particular asked me this last week, mm. and his comment was, Jess often talks in his videos, and they're really good, mm. but it kind of, on his opinion on how it impacts him, is obviously right. your videos. So if you're in the client's shoes, yep. you've got a much smaller portfolio than you've got, and you rely on the cash flow from it, yeah, yeah? would you now, with everything that's going on, mm -hmm. consider buying more? Mm. Yeah. Because even though you know when you come to refinance it, you're going to get less cash flow on the new house than you have had mm -hmm. on the current ones, and you need that cash flow, you rely on it. Yes, I would. Can I tell you why? Yeah. You want more than that? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I would, Danny, one more. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what else would you do? I've got a plan. I would say that, to be fair. It's a good plan. I'm happy with the plan. I'm going to keep executing that plan. I've, I've checked it. Interest rates at about six. Interest rates from if, if they went to eight percent, I'd still be okay. I wouldn't be making much money every month. Um, I don't need the cash flow from my properties to live, and I never have. I've never lived on that um, because I wanted to keep growing. If if I did need it, I suppose if you're in that position right now, then you're in that position. But I'd, I'd try and as quickly as I could work my way towards a point where, let's say, I need to live on five houses, you know? I'll get myself 10, so that I've got 10 free and clear because that's the stuff to build. Now, you know, there's a very good question that gets leveled at me is like, you know, what are you doing this for and why and what? But um, I, I probably haven't got a really good answer for that and, um, you know, be the richest man in the graveyard, etc., etc. But I do notice the more houses you get, the more fun life is, honestly. There's not, I can't think of a good reason to stop buying houses. Um, you know, can I think of a really, really good reason why I need more houses? Honestly, probably not. But I can't think of a reason to stop buying houses. And then when I got a few more houses and a bit more money, there's some fun thing that I can do. Um, or, or important thing you can do, you know, kids. Um, 
schools, colleges, holidays, all that kind of stuff. It's good stuff. So, you know, um, I just like buying more houses. So, yeah, I, I buy more um, and I try and get the cash flow position over and above what I need to live. Some part of that is trying to bring your, in, your, your, your outgoings down. So you've got a disposable income. What was the rest of the question? Have I, have I answered that bit? I think you've probably answered it. Have I? I think you've probably answered it. Okay. Um, basically, yeah. I haven't. I've got you one more thing to add. More. I've got one more thing to add. Okay. The houses that I bought, even if they weren't quite as good as I'd hoped cash flow wise right now, you can't have both. There's, there's two sides of the coin. You can't have, you can't have great cash flow and be able to get, we've had some pretty good cash flow out of some of the other stuff, but you can't get a bargain yeah. price in, the, in those areas. You can't have both. You, it's a sliding scale. If it's an absolute bargain, well, you can't have that on the other side of things. a lot of people are getting whipped up mm. and at the same time forgetting that we're coming out of the last 10 years of the lowest ever interest rates mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was brilliant. It's mm -hmm. not going to be as brilliant as that anymore. Yeah. But it's still the, uh, the best thing to do yeah. with, your, with your money. The best place to invest is in yeah. property. On the flip side of that, those 10 years worth of... Um, good interest rates, rents didn't go up that much in that period of time, you know? Um, the, yeah, yeah, absolutely. everything balances out. When, when one thing goes one way, one goes the other way. Um, bottom line, and this would never be me, but house prices are doing this and have done, and if you really want to get out, you get out and you sell them, wouldn't you? Every house that we buy, you buy it, you put a tenant in it. If you wanted to sell it there and then as a going concern, it'd be worth more than you just paid for it. So, you know, I mean, I don't do that, but that, that, that's the option. Okay. okay. Right. Third one. Yeah. <laughs> you like. Will I? Does that mean I won't like it? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Mm. Um, with interest rates higher compared to the last decade, interest rate, yeah. would you recommend now cheaper properties with a smaller mortgage loan? Yeah. So like on. sub yeah. 100 grand purchase yeah. price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a smaller mortgage loan, right, yeah. smaller... Monthly payment, yeah, or a higher end single let, two hundred k plus purchase price because your rent's higher. I smiled when I heard that question too. Go on. <laughs> it's a sliding scale. It's like it's, it's not. It's a non-question. It's, it's, it's a question, it's a question, but it's a. It doesn't. You don't relate one thing to the other. Well, you you, you keep track of them. It's okay. Well, I don't need to answer that one. <laughs> well, uh, let's break that I down. I think you break it down into risk. So if, yeah. I, people are always worried about oh, my, is my rate going to get paid? So if my rate doesn't get paid on I see the what, I see what you mean. house, mm -hmm. there's less, you know, mm. to cover in that period until you claim your rent back. Tenants generally, legal tenants generally speaking, pay their rent. If you're really worried I mean. about that, that's you, where that you fear get, comes from. That's you where you get, comes out of fear of that. Probably. Possibly. Um, the, the two big fears of a landlord, your house getting trashed and the tenant not paying, rarely, rarely come true. Of course they could do. You can insure against both. You can get rental legal insurance to cover you against the tenant not paying. You can get malicious damage cover on your insurance to insure against that if that's what you, yeah. yeah. So if you're worried about that, I mean, I don't have those insurances. Uh, and the insurances are very cheap. I, would, I think, I can't remember the last time I looked, but um, it's like 20 quid a month for rent and legal and uh, 150 quid a year for the, so about the same for, 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 for insurance with malicious damage cover. So it's cheap, which tells you the insurance companies know that it doesn't really happen very often. Um, yeah, so, so the, other, the other part of the question is the houses we buy from anywhere from 100 to 200,000 pounds, that's typical rental stock, isn't it? Um, would I buy a 500,000 pound house that rents for 2,000 pounds a month? Or you know the two two thousand pound two hundred thousand pound house that rents out for you know twelve thirty. I, I wouldn't go that end. So if we talk about that kind of house, million pound mansions to rent out, no. But then the band of houses that we buy, that the, the, the what's what's a deal and when the deal runs out, from a hundred thousand pounds to two hundred thousand pounds, that's quite a narrow band, really. I mean, it's double. One's one's twice as expensive as the other, but the increase in risk. Is is very minimal. You know, it's, it's, that, that's a lot of houses. It's a very core, you know, housing stock in the UK, isn't it? And when you look at the rent versus the capital um, value of the house, then as the value goes up, the rents do go up. Not quite as much, but they do. Um, and when you go start of over that, the rents stop going up as enough to cover it. So um, yeah, as long as you stick in that band. 
I wouldn't really care either way. Do you know one of the, the biggest um, ways it affects it is, and, and I was explaining earlier, I, I think the biggest lever any landlord has got, the biggest, the most significant decision they've got to got to make is, do I do I stop or do I keep going? Because if 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 you keep going and you keep going, you keep going. If you're like I said, property prices went down by thirteen percent or up by five percent or two percent, but it, it it's basically on a marathon. It's a small up or a small down. It's not it's not crazy. It's not crazy. If over the period of ten years you just keep going, whether it's up or down, up or down, the fact you kept going is worth way more than whether you manage to time it a little bit here or a little bit there. Don't forget, you can't abstain from doing anything, abstain and uh, then buy 10 houses. It takes time, you've got to build them, you've got to build, you've got to build. You probably, unless you can, it, but if you can, then you could have bought 100 in that time. So we're talking about one capital pot into a house, wait for it to go up in value a bit, add some value to it by doing whatever, new kitchen, new bathroom, recycling the money out. That takes some time. It just, it just takes six, seven, eight, nine months. So you can't get to, you know, I did nothing for 10 years, money in the bank's eroding, never mind, forget about that. Uh, and then on the fifth year, all the houses I would have bought in those five years, I just bought by them all now in year five. You will not do that, it's impossible. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. So the, the most important decision you've got to make is just keep going. It's a marathon, there might be a little bit of an uphill, there might be a little bit of a, a downhill, but generally speaking, if you keep going over the course of a decade, um, you'll look back and you know, not, not everything's been plain sailing when I've been buying them, but um, I'm glad I did. It also gets easier. After, True. after you know, people say, oh, it's all right for you because you've got more houses. Not true. Like if I've got one house, if somebody's got one house and it's bad, it's going wrong, it's one house going bad, it's wrong, you could probably cover it on your, on your, um, your salary. If you've got 10, 20, 100, and they're going wrong, you can't, you're in trouble. So I need to make sure that I have got that bedrock, that rock solid foundation, the right kind of houses. Um, but I think, I think there is something that comes with having, as long as everything's right, once you've got five, six, seven houses, we notice, our clients, some of these questions don't come out anymore. That's fair to say? Yeah, true. Um, oh, we hit on something there then. If you're worried about those things, it, they disappear after four or five. So the answer is buy more, then you get over it, which is true. Yeah, yeah. When, when, I, when I was first... Um, ask those kind of questions. You know, I, I, I quite quickly, this is the point that Adam and I are doing these together because Adam's bringing um, everybody's um, uh, sort of consciousness into me. So I, you know, checking rather than just me talking and um, nobody checking checking me and, and pulling me back. <laughs> then then I get these because these are genuine things. But I, honestly, my, my first thing is, right, just go buy more, just go buy more. And it's informed by having bought loads more. I know I've probably always been a bit gung-ho like that. Just buy more and buy more, and that was the answer. Um, but it worked, you know. And after four, five, six houses, you'll find that the the, the profits that are coming in, as long as you bought the right house in the right area and they're making the right money, they'll all start to work. And then you'll get a lot more confidence. You'll see what's happening, and you can actually afford. You, you, it'll take a knock as well, won't it? You know, if interest rates do go up a bit, or if you do get a void, you look at it and go, "Yeah, I'm all right." So, don't don't cut it to the to the bone. You're always quite good at that. Speaking to clients about. You know, if this is if this is your last penny, don't don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. You know, make sure that you've got enough spare a buffer to cover a, a, a knock. Um, see you through uh, you know, that sort of six month period if, if 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 you get a tenant that doesn't pay or you need to do a renovation or whatever it is, um, and then build your portfolio from there. More's always better. I haven't found a good reason not to buy houses yet. So, all right, all right, we're done. Uh, see you next time.